welcome back. We're talking about dopamine and protecting your pleasure centers so that you can feel better fast and make it last. And one of the ways you drip dopamine into our brains is you send a review for the podcast. <laughs> okay, so this is Who Knew? This podcast is full of insightful wisdom for a variety of aspects you may not connect to brain health. So refreshing to know they're looking into new ways to diagnose and treat various brain issues. I love it. So yeah, it's true because everything connects to your brain. So some of the things we talk about, you don't really necessarily think of as being related to your brain, but everything is your relationships, how you get along with your kids. I mean, every single thing, how we managing your politics. Money. I mean, how, how things are going in the world, every sort of thing is connected to how we Take care of ourselves, right? You mean how often you tweet in the middle of the night? Don't, is don't, connected. don't, 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 just don't, just don't. All right. So now we're going to start into six strategies to create lasting joy from feel better fast and make it last. And strategy number one, um, and you've heard me talk about this before, is you need to focus daily on what gives you passion and mm -hmm. purpose. And for me, that would be you. Um, and uh, I love an exercise that we tell our patients to do called the One Page Miracle. Virtually every single patient I've seen over the last 30 years, um, I ask them to do this exercise. So this is so helpful. One piece of paper, write down what you want in your relationships, mm -hmm. in your work, for your money for your physical, emotional, and spiritual health. Why are you on the planet? What is your deepest sense of meaning and purpose? And it starts there. So under relationships, I always want to have a kind, caring, loving, supportive, passionate relationship with Tana. I always want that. No, I don't always feel like that. I may be tired. I may be stressed. I may be mad, whatever. But no matter what is going on in my moment by moment life, that is the stake in the ground. Right. And so if I'm smart, you know, when I get this random, rude, irritating thought that I think I should say, I really try to filter it through. Right. Will this get me what I want? Well, and, kind, caring, loving, supportive, passion. And, and we're all busy. It? And, you know, I'm like I'm at an age, like many of our listeners, because they write into me sometimes. Um, you know, hormones start to just, they, they wreak havoc with, with how you feel about yourself, with how you feel within your relationship. This is important when it comes to relationships because... Everything's not about how you feel about something. And I, I'm sorry to be that blunt about it, but it's just not. Like you said, you don't always feel loving, but you know you always want that in your relationship. Same thing. You don't always feel sexy. You don't always feel all these things. But if knowing this is, on, this is your one page miracle, if knowing this is ultimately what your goal is, you do it anyways because it's an investment. You do it because it's the right thing to do for your marriage, for your family, for your kids, for your home, for your long-term happiness. It's the right thing to do. You don't like go by moment to moment, like feelings, because that will not get you where you want to be ever. So write down what you want, relationships, work, money, your physical, emotional, and spiritual self. And then you ask yourself every day, does my behavior get me what I want. And people go, oh, that's so selfish. It's totally not selfish. Because the things you want generally are good things that move your life. Right. If they're not, that's a whole other thing. You might need some therapy. But but one thing I want to say about one thing I want to say about the one page miracle. One thing I like to tell people is don't write it and put it away where you're not going to see it. Now, if you're going to keep it on you, like in your pocket, that's fine. But I usually coach people to keep it on a bathroom mirror or somewhere where they're going to see it regularly. And one thing that I've done, like I, once you get really used to doing this and, you know, you do it regularly, like when I get up in the morning and when I go to bed at night, I just, it's automatically, now it's just automatic. It's sort of in my head. So when I do my prayer and meditation, it's like, okay, 
relationship and I would like focus on that. What do I want? You know, like, and I start and I, and I just, I pray good things for people in my life. You, Chloe, my mom, and I go through my list and then next business, like, you know, I pray for our business. I pray, you know what I mean? So then you go through it. It's like, and I, it's like on one hand, I know that these are the five points that I want to like really focus on when I get up in the morning and when I go to bed at night. And it just, it becomes automatic. But if you know that there are like five, those five major categories, and then within those, it's like the people in my life, you know, business, what is it that we want to accomplish and money and Right. But that. notice money is only like one part of that. But right. so many people are so focused on that, that they abandon their health, they abandon their relationships, and then they wonder why they're miserable. Right. The, the second part is... So these are six steps to create lasting joy, know what you want. The second part is you want to start limiting low value dopamine producing mm -hmm. activities. So those are things like much caffeine, nicotine, excessive television, politics, video games, undisciplined digital. So behavior. so let's let's go just for one second. Quickly, I know we need to keep going, but caffeine. So that was a really hard one for me. And I'm not going to lie. I still, it's not that I don't like caffeine. Um, so you got to come up with strategies. So maybe switching to, you know, some, switch some things to green tea. I, in the past, I used to drink caffeine all day long, especially when I was working in the hospital. Um, so now in the afternoon, I switched to, I definitely don't drink any caffeine past like 1130 in the morning, switch to green tea. And in the morning, we do half cap or quarter cap. I mean, like you dilute it down with almond milk. We like, we have strategies so that we're not getting a lot of caffeine. So from where I was, like when I used to drink a pot, pot and a half a day of coffee um, before I met you and I really understood what caffeine does to the brain. It's not that I don't have any caffeine, but I really limit it. And I still have the idea of like the comfort of a cup of coffee, but, or I'll have decaf and it still feels like you're having it. And when I met you, you were way more intense. Than you are now. Yeah, I, I mean, intense is just part of who I am. But but you're calmer yeah. for sure. Well, I think I think um, menopause does that too. Uh, so. uh, not generally, <laughs> and you not absolutely not generally. Speaking from a psychiatrist yeah, standpoint, and scary movies. Oh my gosh, this is just <laughs> I why hate scary. So movies? you have to go. Why does the movie Saw exist? And Halloween 35. I, I just <laughs> want, but my mom used to drag me to these movies when I was little. And I'm like, I still am traumatized. Like, I hate scary movies so much. So what do you remember? What movies do you the remember? The Hills Have Eyes, Silent Scream, Onion Field. Like, I remember going to those when I was a little girl. And I still to this day ask her, why did you take, why did you do that to me? Because she wore out her place. She's like, why well, didn't know? I didn't know they were going to be that She drank coffee bad. all day. She smoked cigarettes. She's she ADD was from hell. Come on, let's ADD. just say it like it is. So, <laughs> so. And so this was her stimulant. But when you overstimulate the basal ganglia, um, where dopamine is produced, when and, you and overstimulate, you wear out the nucleus accumbens, which then requires more and more, which explains saw Two, three, four, five, six, and I'm gonna and three D. And I'm gonna throw you under the bus for a second. So I, I spilled my dirt on the caffeine. Yours is the mistress, okay? So you, he's got to put parameters around his mistress because I will get really upset and I don't share very well. The mistress is the phone, okay? The mist, that's the other woman is the phone, and so he's always on the news, sports, whatever. But if he, but he knows that he can't do that all the time because you know it's not good for you. So so we have. We have boundaries around the phone and we have to do that. And the other one is you would listen to the news way more than I will allow. Like we don't do news first thing one in the morning and I do not do news before bed. Those are my rules. Like absolutely no news in the house when I wake up. If I come downstairs and the news is on, like I'm turning it off. This is just not going to happen. So you have to put boundaries around it. It's okay to listen to the news, but it's not the first thing I want to hear and it's not the last thing before bed. So dumping dopamine wears out your pleasure centers. So some activities that dump dopamine besides the one we just talked about, helicopter skiing, racing motorcycles, mm -hmm. jumping out of airplanes, running with the bulls. And why? What? Why? What, how is that even rational? I don't because know. Because it's a dopamine rush. See, for me, karate it's is, life but that's without not your a bad frontal thing. Lobes. Like you can do um, fun Drugs things. dump dopamine. So whether it's cocaine or um, marijuana, does it? Alcohol, 
does it, opiates do it, you pl press on the pleasure centers, and over time, but, oh, you wear way, those suckers out. But oh, by the way, so does hugging someone you love. Wait, like your you're, baby. you're getting ahead of me. That's <laughs> dripping. We're into dumping got dopamine. It, got it, got it. Other things that dump dopamine, pornography, mm -hmm. um, video games, constantly falling in love. Mm. So now there are people who get addicted like to Tinder that, like initial. And match and, yeah. that, which we're fans of. Um, no, right? we're not I mean, fans of the, the But love. we're not of being a fan of addicted. And the one thing is fame. Um, when you become famous and people recognize you when you go to the grocery store, that's like a hit of dopamine. And for the young um, actresses funny. and I singers I saw, um, I my prayer for them is... Dear God, please don't let me be famous before my brain is developed. It's hilarious. Now, Tana does not like it when I don't people like it. Oh, she does sometimes. We're just, where no, were we? In no, no, what I London, like, hold on. And people recognize you. What I like is I like it when people say that something in their life has changed. The teacher in me, the like the, the helper in me the loves that, person. the purposeful person. I don't love the recognition part when I'm just out somewhere. Like that kind of freaks me out. It's so weird because I always people expect people to recognize you. So when someone comes running at me from like far away, it freaks me out. You think they're about to attack I you. I do. I get freaked <laughs> out. So like if someone came running up and knocked on our car window, please don't do that. If you know anything about me, do not do that. So come up slowly, say hello. Don't run up and knock on my window. <laughs> so so um, sugar also dumps dopamine. And ultimately, it wears out your pleasure centers. And I talked about people overweight or obese. They actually have a blunted response in their nucleus accumbens, which means they don't feel pleasure, which means they have to overdo things um, in order to feel normal. So people don't abuse drugs because they just constantly want to feel good. Ultimately, when you wear out the nucleus accumbens, you end up doing drugs again, not so that you're going to get high. So that you're not normal. depressed. Yeah. Um, you're really, you're using them now as self-medication because self you've worn out those pleasure centers. Um, when we come back, we're going to teach you how to drip dopamine. Stay with us. Use the code PODCAST10 to get a 10% discount on a full evaluation at amenclinics.com or on our supplements at brainmdhealth.com. Thank you for listening to the Brain Warriors Way podcast. Go to iTunes and leave a review and you'll automatically be entered into a drawing to get a free signed copy of the Brain Warriors Way and the Brain Warriors Way cookbook we give away every month.